Okay. Where do I want to begin? <clears throat> A little distracted tonight. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about going and doing this um, live, but honestly, tonight I'm just just a little preoccupied with some family news that I I just found out maybe 20 minutes ago before the show went off the air. So I apologize in advance for my my lack of enthusiasm or whatever the case may be. Um so I do. I, I apologize for that. But as far as Monday Night Raw goes, oh crap. Let's see. I have somewhere I, I hear I have a Twitter poll. Let's look at this. I did. I uh, Let me refresh this. I put a Twitter poll up. Uh, asked, what do y'all think of Raw? I said, you can love it. You know, this sucks, good show, or won't watch. And actually, a very, um, a very interesting um, thing here. Surprisingly, and I, <laughs> I'm usually pretty much where most people are with their beliefs on what the show is. Looking at this, 20% say it sucks. 40% say it's a good show, and the other 40% say they love it. They say they they say they say love the show. Uh, I'm going to check on this before I'm finished with this review. Uh, I, I, I just, I, 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 I don't know. I don't see, I don't see um, what, what it is that they see that's good about this show. Now, granted, uh, there's some good spots, like one or two good spots, like at the beginning of the show with Finn Balor. Um, really good, good spot. But the rest of this show was, oh, the rest of the show was just garbage. You know what I mean? Like this was a garbage episode. Like Sean Ross Sapp and Justin Labar and all these guys on on Twitter just. Just ah, oh, and then just these cringe, super cringe segments, like the moment of bliss segment was just so cringe. You know what I mean? Just Nia Jax coming out first off, and there was so much, so much talking tonight, so flipping much talking, like almost every match. I, I guarantee you, maybe one didn't. Like, yeah, maybe one match had no talking before it happened. Maybe two. I think that was the last two tag matches before the main event. Like, every match began with a promo or something tonight. Like, this was supposed to be your go-home show for the Royal Rumble for the Raw shit, for all, the, the Raw brand. And, my God, did it suck. Did this suck? Hell yes, this show was horrible. I've not seen something this bad in so, so long, man. I just... Oh my god. This was bad. I think that's one of the reasons I just decided I wasn't even going to go live. Because I just wanted to, to get my thoughts. I wanted no interruptions. I'm just going to sit here and say what I had to say and get it over with. Um... God, this show sucks. This show was just... Oh, so horrible. I mean, I, looking through my notes... Like, I had an idea of what I wanted to say, but looking through my notes, the last little bit with Sasha was good. Sasha and Ronda. I, I just... I don't see anything. <laughs> like, this was such a bad show. The new era... We're going to do new things, new matchups, new faces. Lacey Evans, she was, you know, out on stage. You know, she, um, 
she said that she's in the Royal Rumble. That's what we got. Lacey Evans is in the Rumble. When she talked like this, a sophisticated lady, Royal Rumble. God, it was just, I don't know. But she looked good, and um, but she had no pop. I'll get to that, obviously, when I get to the, the Moment of Bliss segment, which was just freaking... Oh my gosh, I have not witnessed such a bad Raw in so... I mean, the last few weeks have been okay. They've gotten, you know, decent. But this week it was just like, what is it with Raw and holiday episodes? They just act like they don't care. You know what I mean? Sorry, I gotta fix this. That is, they just they act like they don't care at all, and I just I don't understand the the um, the logic behind the, their 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 the way they do it. I just I don't understand it. Why why do they refuse to actually give us a decent show? Would it kill the WWE to give us a show we we might actually like? Would that be so bad, WWE, to let me, like, enjoy a show? Like, not just a segment or two, but an entire show. Did I need so much talking tonight? Did we need to hear every single person have something to say? I, I'm i just floored with, with just, God, the, the lack of effort that I saw on the show tonight. It was just so bad. You know, it, and I have a feeling tomorrow night's SmackDown's not going to be very much better because tomorrow night we got Vince McMahon on SmackDown and they're doing the contract signing. More talking. God, I just want to get to the Rumble and, and get it over with. Because it's just like, I don't even know. It's like these, these guys, they're not trying. They're not trying at all. You know, 30 writers or whatever, and they can't give me a good show. You're not just me. It's not, that sounds kind of um, prude of me. But just any of us. It's like we can't get a legit good show out of these guys why why do i have to sit here and beg or just watch it even when i'm not recording why do i have to feel like god it's so bad it's so so bad it's horrible this this there's no change. There's no change. You got a couple of weeks where it's like, oh, okay, this is kind of going in a good direction. Then tonight it was just back to back to being what it was, back to being bad and just boring. So much talking. I, I, I'm going to just talk. I'm just going to talk random crap because that's basically what you got tonight. Vince McMahon trying to describe David versus Goliath was just hard to follow. I mean, you got with Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins talking and I lost track of what they were saying. It just, I don't even, I, what is the point? What is the point of watching raw anymore? Like, I don't even, I, I just, uh, this, this was such a bad show. I keep saying that, but it was, it was, it was a bad show, man. I, I feel, I, I almost feel like I don't want to review it no more. It's so bad. I'm going to review it because my God, I, I got these new layouts and obviously I, I want to people to see my new layouts. I, I've worked hard on these things. I've worked really hard on revamping this channel, so I'm not going to stop, but it's just bad. You know, how am I going to get my girlfriend to watch this? It's so bad. Mark it. <laughs> Ten minutes in, I've said something. It is, it's just, I, I... I mean, yes, 
I have intrigue with seeing Finn Balor taking on Brock Lesnar. I've lost hope that it's going to be the demon. And with the way that they're hyping him up with the verbiage that they're giving you of, you know, he can't win. Everyone, Braun Strowman, who is supposed to be a face, even came out and said, I don't think you can beat him, but you better. Just, it's like they're trying to make you think, oh, no way this guy's going to lose just for him to lose, just to throw us off the trail. It's not, I don't think it's going to be Demon Balor. I don't think it's going to be Demon Balor at WrestleMania now. Or at uh, the Royal Rumble. I don't think it's going to be. I'll, 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 you know, say more on it in a minute, but... There is definite intrigue with that match. But I don't think I have much... Uh, and then, yeah, Sasha versus Ronda. I'm super stoked to see how that match goes, even though I'm pretty sure I know the outcome. But... Due to the fact that I've, I'm seeing the old Sasha Banks, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it as a win. You know, a, a small win, but I'll take it. But those those two situations uh, don't make up for the just purely bad show that this was. Because it was, it was just a horrible freaking show. From top to bottom, it was just bad. Such a bad show. I I, I was bored, and I, I, you know, usually I try to sit and keep a really close eye on what's happening so I can really take my notes. But tonight, I was worried about everything but this damn show because this show was just that bad. I just didn't care. You know, and, and I, I can't just pinpoint it at one particular incident on the show. You know, there was just, you know, so many bad parts to it tonight. You know, you, you, usually when you have a go-home show, you really try to make it, you know, put your best foot forward in it because this is the show you want people to talk about that's going to hook people to make you watch a pay-per-view. This for WWE, for I don't know how many years now, they seem to really not care about the... They don't treat a go-home show like a go-home show anymore. They just treat it like any other episode. And that's so, you know, it's like concerning, you know? It's... Do they really... I just... I don't think they really care. You know, they came out however many weeks ago, how they want to change things, but I, I don't feel like they really are. And I don't... I... I does anyone blame me? Do you blame anyone for feeling that way about these shows? You shouldn't. Because these shows are just that bad. They are. They're just that damn bad. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to review this show. But, you know, if you really did like this show, I'm here to tell you, this isn't going to be a place you want to watch then. Because I'm going to take a dump on this show. Okay? I'm going to take a dump on this show because it was bad. I will give the positives where the positives are needed and where they are warranted. Outside of that, I'm going to take a dump on this show because it was bad. It was so bad. Oh, God, it was bad. Get my throat wet because I have a lot to say. Actually, I don't know if I do have a lot to say. I know I have a lot to say about parts, but, you know, for the most part, <laughs> most of this, I I think I just kind of was like, eh, all right, I, that happened. You know, just write it down. This this happened. Move on. What What's next? Okay, the match finished like this. And that happened a few times. I was just distracted. I know, I keep moving around. It's trying to get comfortable in here. I don't know. Like, <laughs> this was such a, such a bad show. It was. It was a bad show. I don't know what to tell anybody. It was, it was just that bad. I, I don't know why I'm leaning in all the way. I can move my mic over to me. It was, it was a bad show. What is, what does people want to, you know, want me, they want me to tell you? But <sighs> I've been rambling too long and coherently, much like Monday Night Raw was, but yes, this is your Monday Night Raw 
for January 21st, 2019. This is Martin Luther King Day, I guess, because it's a holiday episode. Monday Night Raw figured they could take a break, that they didn't have to really do nothing, even though it's the, you know, show before the Royal Rumble. Jesus Christ, people. Jesus Christ. But this did, took place in Oklahoma City, a place I used to live nearby. Love Oklahoma City. It's a beautiful little city. Um, great people there. Uh, it was good to see the crowd turned out, but every time you saw an NXT call-up, they really gave them nothing. There was, like, no uh, no real energy behind them for these people. And that's, that's kind of sad. I'm sad that that was the case. But, like I said, yes, this is your Monday Night Raw review. And um, before I get into the show itself, let's go over some stuff. Big Weekend is definitely... Definitely coming up. Lots of stuff. It is Royal Rumble weekend, which means, we, as you know, there is NXT TakeOver Phoenix. That's coming. So, because it's coming, uh, back to the old formula, people. Uh, I will be doing both a reactions video. You're going to see me able to watch me do my live reactions, and then I will review the show. Not sure if it's going to be live or not. Um, with the stream being as bad as it is and the kids being here, and I know they'll be up. It's a Saturday night. I'll probably just record the review and then upload it afterwards. Um, so it won't be an actual live review, but I will be reviewing it and it will be uploaded before midnight. So, um, that is definitely going to happen. I'm, I'm excited. Um, TakeOver is looking like a fantastic show, so I can't wait to get to that. And with there being TakeOver, there will be a preview and predictions video that will go up on Friday that you have to look uh, forward to. Um, also, since it's Royal Rumble weekend, uh, return of the best of the best countdown, our top ten list that we do here on the channel. Uh, this one's a special one. It's the top 10 Royal Rumble winners. I will be recording that video very soon. It will be going up on Patreon first on Wednesday. Uh, usually it's going to be a Saturday, so it would go to Patreon on Thursdays. However, with everything else going on this weekend, uh, and this might be a, a pay-per-view weekend type thing for the Retro Rewinds and the Best of the Best podcasts going forward, if it's a you know big pay-per-view weekend with like TakeOver and stuff like that, it'll probably be on a Friday. But uh, at least for this month, um, yeah, best of the best will be on the channel. Uh, it will go live for everybody on Friday, but will be put onto the Patreon on Wednesday. So if you want to be a Patreon member, you can go there and you'll be able to see that best of the best countdown before everybody else. Otherwise, you'll see it Friday at noon. Um, also going up on the channel, this, oh gosh, I can't wait to do this. It's going to be your Yo Bro Nation WWE 2K19 Universe Mode. It's going to be Episode 1. It's going to be The Royal Rumble for Saturday, January 26th. It's going to be at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Eastern. Actually, that should be backwards. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10 a.m. Pacific. How in the world did that happen? I don't even realize I just now noticed that that happened. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've lost it. I don't know why I put that backwards. But yeah, it's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. Jesus, I'm such a moron. <laughs> I I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to look at that again. <laughs> Damn, it's backwards. Oh, well, it's backwards. It happens, right? Uh, but that's going live. Episode 1, you got the Men's Royal Rumble. You got the Women's Royal Rumble. You got the Fatal 4-Way with AJ Styles, Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, and a fourth competitor of your guys' choosing. You guys can go to that and vote on that. You get Aleister Black, Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, or Rusev. Those are your options uh, for the fourth and final competitor right now. Uh, it's tight. It's between Dean Ambrose and Aleister Black. I check it daily. You guys got till Thursday night to do that, uh, and vote. So that way Saturday, uh, you guys know who the fourth competitor is. Also, dream match happening for that show. Finn Balor versus Daniel Bryan. So that's going to be a pretty fantastic show. Um, you guys can go you know, and join me on that. But... 
The real Royal Rumble is happening on Sunday, and of course, I will be doing my live reactions. I will be live streaming that uh, on Saturday, on Sunday night. You guys can join me and watch. I will start uh, after the kickoff show. I'm not watching the kickoff show and streaming that. I'm not going to sit on here for six hours and wear my voice out uh, when I'm already going to be on there for four hours and a half probably doing that. After it goes off, I will be doing a live review for that show for sure. So you guys will be able to join me for that. Um, so yeah, there will be that. Now to some more house business. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to get some exclusive content, such as the early access to both the Yo Bro Nation podcast, which is coming back soon, the Squared Circle podcast will also probably be a part of this package eventually. It's coming back at some point or another. Just get the best of the best countdown. You can get the retro rewinds two days early, uh, such as the one this week. You get you know early access to those. Exclusive AEW coverage. Uh, many, many different shows you guys can watch on there that are exclusive. Um, you can go there. There are six tiers to choose from. You can also be a producer and co-producer. You get credit for that, and you get to help us decide what happens with the channel. You will have control. Lots of exclusive content uh, on there. Back, you know, behind-the-scenes vlogs. You get birthday gifts for free. Your choice of the merchandise. I actually have one of my shirts coming. Can't wait to wear that. Um, yeah, did you guys can go to patreon.com forward slash Nation. Become a patron. Join the nation, guys. Join the nation. If you don't feel like that's something that you really want to do, well, guess what? There is another option for you guys that you can do as a part of, you know, this channel. So that is buy our merch, tpublic.com forward slash Yobro Nation 1. We got the classic Yobro gaming and review shirt, the new Charlotte Rain shirt, the Yobro Nation Recess Never Die shirt, the Kissing Bandit shirt and the new Yobro Nation t-shirt. You guys can go on there, get that merch. It is available. tpublic.com forward slash Yobro Nation 1. Lots of stuff, um, you know, coming up. Like I said, it's going to be a big weekend, you know, for a lot of channels here on YouTube. So, you know, if you want to keep up with the content, best thing to do you don't have to buy no merch. You don't have to subscribe to no, you know, Patreon services. The best thing you can do is like this video, share this video, and to make sure you keep up with everything we have going on this weekend, click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with everything we do. And like I said, lots of content coming up. Lots of content coming up now that we're through the Rumble. Maybe doing some classic Raw reviews that are going to go to Patreon. That stuff's going to be awesome. So that's just that's some of the stuff. Go to the t go to the Patreon. Check out the stuff. Maybe you'll find something that's worth your while. So you guys can go there. All right. But all right. So let's go ahead. Let's get into this this raw review. Right. I think that's what we're here for. I'm sure people are tired of hearing me blab. So. The show did. It opened up with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. They came out to the ring. Paul Heyman, of course, speaks to the crowd about Finn Balor and how Finn Balor earned his way into the match. Finn Balor, you know, he believes in himself, then it, it's warranted, and everyone else should believe in Finn Balor. He, he, he talked a really good game. Now, I'm going to play the clip. I decided I'm, I'm going to play the clip. It was too much to write. So much happened in this. And then I'll just I'll give my thoughts. Um, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to pull up that clip. All right. So this is, and hopefully you guys can hear it. This is Finn Balor and Paul Heyman. Now, they cut off uh, a lot of what Paul Heyman had to say. But you guys are going to be able to hear a, a good majority of what he had to say. So this is Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar in the ring, Finn Balor, Vince McMahon, Braun Strowman, all to follow. So here we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here comes your spoiler alert for this edition of Monday Night Raw. Even miracles fear Brock Lesnar. 
Now, um, just in case, if you're wondering where this is at, this, is, this was all after he, he gave a lot of praise to Finn Balor, talking about how he earned his way in and that, you know, he, he could capitalize on Brock with Brock not being able to prepare when he's been preparing for Braun Strowman, but now he's got to try to prepare for Finn Balor. Uh, but then he basically turned the whole thing, you know, on its head. This Sunday night at Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona, at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view event, when my client Brock Lesnar puts to bed this ridiculous notion that Finn Balor even belongs in the ring with the Beast. It will be Finn Balor on his back, looking up and saying, oh my God, I believe in Brock Lesnar. So and Finn Balor versus McMahon. Brock Lesnar. I mean, I would suggest to you the only way anyone could believe in this is if they believe in the old story of uh, David and Goliath. Remember that one? I, I never oh, dear. Line. This analogy he had was horrible. This could truly be David and Goliath. You see, let me refresh your memory. One day, David went out into the neighborhood. He ate every single mushroom he could possibly find. This and is then from not there, at all I'm going to go up and challenge goes. that big, nasty, mean giant. And he did. You think he quit the giant David's Goliath Mario. beat the holy hell out of David. And he was never seen again until he was reincarnated as Finn Balor. That is definitely not the story. If any of but you Vince people never actually read believe Bible. that uh, Finn can beat Brock, then you definitely all believe in fairy tales. You know, last Monday was the worst night of my life, thanks to Baron Corbin. He cost me $100,000, and he cost me my Universal Championship match for you. Real quick, uh, maybe I'm the only one. Uh, I'm sure there's others out there. I am so past the Braun, the Braun Strowman crap. I, I could seriously, seriously care less what this man has to say. He's just, he's starting to sound more and more cringe when he's on the microphone. And even what he said tonight, why was, first of all, why was he even out there? What was the point in Braun Strowman even being a part of this? It's like, everyone shit on Finn Balor night? Like, Jesus Christ. But saying that, last Monday was the luckiest night in your life as well. So if you still have that Universal Championship after this Sunday, somehow I'll be waiting on the other side and I'm gonna rip you apart like another one of Mr. McMahon's limousines. Why are the people even cheering for that? Like, this is stupid, it's stupid. I, I don't know, I love you Oklahoma City, but damn, that was dumb. Um, I don't know. I don't see the purpose of Braun Strowman being here for this at all. I don't think it was needed. But, you know, WWE doing what WWE does. And he's just so cringe. There was a point where Vince McMahon was literally yelling at, you could hear it audibly, yelling at Brock Lesnar. Stop playing with him. Brock, stop playing with him. It was, I don't know. This is so ridiculous. I know you don't believe that I can beat Brock I don't believe in fairy tales. But I believe. I believe. And the Baller Club believes. The Baller Club. I can't do the accent. I'm so, I'm so. And at the Royal Rumble, I will defeat Brock Lesnar. And I will reclaim my Universal Championship. Oh, Finn, Finn. I know. I could have beat Brock Lesnar. I don't know if you can, but you damn well better. Was that supposed to be like compliments? What was it? Like even Finn, this is, hey, I Brown, like this Thanks line. for the support, I appreciate it. But um, really, next time keep your nose out of my business because I'm gonna do something that you've never done and that's beat Brock Lesnar. 
very on now, the Vince, you got the, Finn uh, can't the story win a little bit train, mixed up. Yeah. No, 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 no. I got I think I got an idea. Don't go anywhere, Brock. I got an idea. Yeah, don't go nowhere, Brock, as Brock continues to just kind of walk away. So yeah, that's right, that's you're right. gone. Vince, you got the story a little bit mixed up. You see, David, he stood in the shadow of a giant, and they laughed. They said, you're half the size, and they laughed in his face. Brock, you're supposed to stay. But they didn't know who David was. They didn't know what he was made of. And Goliath fell, face down in the dirt. Boom! No one was laughing then. Let's have a real life David and Goliath story happen right now. What about it? What about it? Braun Strowman versus Finn Balor. I have a seat. It's going to be very interesting. Let's get her done. So yeah, that was your um, that was your opening to Monday Night Raw. God, it was oh, it was bad. Uh, well, I mean, no, it wasn't bad. Okay, look, I am now totally a hundred thousand and whatever percent invested. I know it's a little lag, um, but I am. I'm super invested in this match. I want to see it. I'm ready to see it. I think it's going to be really awesome. I do. But, but, I just, with it, like I was saying at the start of this video, as much as I'm hearing them push, Finn's not going to win. Finn can't win. Even Braun, who's supposed to be a face, and last I checked, claimed to be a friend of Finn's. Even, even he's just like, I don't know, Finn Finn, if you can win, uh, get these hands. First off, why again? Again, why? Why was why was he out there? What was the point? Why did I I didn't need Brock Lesnar? What or, or Braun Strowman? What to set up this match that ultimately ended with nothing but Brock standing tall? Is that another sign? Hey, Brock stood tall. That means Finn should win because that's usually how it goes, right? I'm gonna get to the match in a second. But I just, it's, they're, it's like they're trying to really convince us. It's either A, they really want us to think Finn cannot win. Or they're really trying to make us think Finn's going to win because listen to how they're talking. Look at Brock finishing out the night with Finn looking good. You know, and how Finn worked in that match. I don't know. I don't know. I could I could just be overthinking this, but it really does look as though somehow they're they're wanting us to really believe in Finn. Just to pull the rug out from us. Because you know, WWE doesn't want us to know what they're gonna do. So play a little reverse psychology with us. You get look at it, guys. Finn's gotta win. Look at it. Just to ultimately say Finn's not gonna win. You know, just to, I don't know, just to make us look like idiots. I don't know. Whatever they feel like doing. So, but the match itself, yeah, I, I think the match is going to be good. Brock in the past has worked really great with, you know, smaller guys. You know, look at AJ Styles. Look at Daniel Bryan just at Survivor Series. Really, really good matches. Really good matches. Brock can work when Brock wants to work. As much as people are sick of him, when Brock's ready to show up, and have his payday and make his payday worth our time. Pretty good matches. So I'm all in. Uh, starting to have my doubts about the demon being there, but I still think Finn Balor is going to have a pretty damn good match. Or they're just going to have Finn get demolished and be like, yeah, Finn, you really do suck. We just want people to think you were going to be good just for us to smack you down and make you look like an ass. Hey, that's, I mean, Let's be real. That's a possibility, right? They they could do it, right? They could do it. We'll see, right? So we do get Finn Balor versus Braun Strowman 
what was this match? Braun Strowman chasing Finn around the ring, doing a bunch of shoulder tackles. Braun just being Braun and Finn trying to keep in the game, trying to find his ways around. And he looked good a few times, you know, reversing uh, the running power slam, getting it into a headlock and taking down Braun and just beating him up. Um, Finn got a couple of really good counters. And then finally, Finn, he's about to go for the two coup de gras. This is at the end of the match. Braun grabs him, tosses him onto Brock. Brock grabs him, belly to belly, overhead. Then he gets up on the apron. And he's staring face to face with Braun. Again, I don't think we needed Braun. We didn't need it. We really, we honestly didn't. But Brock gets pulled down off the apron. You know, we start having a game of cat and mouse between Brock, Finn, Finn, and Strowman. Big okay game of cat and mouse with Finn looking good. Finn on the up and up. Finn finally, you know, he gets caught by Strowman, gets dragged into the ring. He reverses something. Strowman goes into the corner post. He drops him with a kick in the corner. He goes up top, hits the coup de gras. Then in comes Lesnar, F5's Finn Balor. Um, okay, so like I said, this was just a lot of Again, I'm trying to think here. Again, it's it's like they really want you to think Finn's going to win this. Everyone's rooting against him, but yet he seems to be able to just deal with the odds, right? Able to overcome the odds in this match. He's able to keep down Lesnar. He's able to keep down Strowman. You know, that's those two big guys who were supposed to clash. Well, he's able to keep them down, right? Ultimately to win by disqualification and then for Brock to hit the F5, which makes you think, okay, most of the time, whoever looks good going, you know, at, out on the go-home show is usually the one who loses. In this case, they're, I really think they're trying to really make us believe that that's what's going to happen, that Brock Lesnar will lose. But I do I just I can't believe it's going to happen. I really think it's just a swerve. I really do. I think it's a swerve. I'll give you my official pick on Friday. It's when you'll get my official picks come Friday when I do the preview and predictions. But yeah, I don't know. I don't I, I guess it's, it's it's a wait and see game. I want to see this match. I'm intrigued. I want to see how the match goes. God forbid. God forbid Braun Strowman interferes and costs Finn Balor this match. That's another possibility. Finn's going to win, and then comes Braun because he's so desperate to beat Brock Lesnar. And then we get another Braun versus Brock match, probably come Mania. God only knows. Jesus, this, it's, the, the, the possibilities are so endless, and it just it bothers me as to what could actually happen. I only have a few days to decide who I really think is going to win and who I think is going to lose. We're going to move on. I've already been in this, what, 40 minutes? I still haven't got past the opening segments. Oh, gosh. Bobby Lashley and Leroy Rush come out. Bobby Lashley, of course, the new Intercontinental Champion. They're having a celebration. He's going to pose on the podium because that's how they celebrate. No open challenges. Lashley's a fighter. I was fully expecting Kevin Owens to show up. I, I don't know why when he starts talking about, you know, Lashley's a fighter, you know, he fights, he's a prize fighter and he fights for money. I was like, oh, are, are they going to bring Kevin Owens out? I mean, there's rumors he's cleared, he's good to go, he's slim and he's looking good. New tattoo. Um, I mean, he's slimmer, uh, but I guess we'll find out, right? But no, it wasn't. It was Apollo Crews came out. He challenged him, you know, I know it's going to be a title match, but... Leroy's like, dude, you're not even good enough to, you know, be in the same ring as Bobby. A title, a, a, an opportunity for a match? It's like, tell you what, win the pose off, you know, we'll give you the match. Well, the pose off was stupid. All right, it was a dumb freaking pose off. Stupid. A bunch of flexing and Apollo Crews dancing, dancing, and then would do a pose. I don't know how to pose. You're a bodybuilder and you don't know how to pose? I, I know what to do to pose. I know. And I, I'm not a bodybuilder. I mean, look at me. I'm I'm a small guy. I know how to pose. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is so... Oh, my God. This is one of those things where, where I was telling you guys, stupid, right? Just stupid. 
More stupid stuff for this stupid show. Oh my god, it was bad. Ugh. But they had the match because Lashley, I guess, I don't know, I guess Apollo won by disqualification for the pose-off? God, I don't know. The match, honestly, I didn't care. I didn't care. I didn't care about the pose down. I didn't care about this. What is Apollo Crews? Who is Apollo Crews? Sure, he was pretty good in NXT, but he wasn't even really great there. So who's Apollo Crews? Nobody. He lost in like five minutes to a spear. One, two, three. I just, I don't care. Give me a reason to care, WWE, and then I'll care. I'll take these guys serious. What, because I see Apollo on TV and he's mingling with the champions. I'm supposed to believe that now he's important. Now he's, you know, relevant or whatever. N nope. You ain't getting me, WWE. You ain't getting me. But then Seth Rollins came out. And my oh my, what'd we get <sighs> for the third straight segment? Another talking segment. <laughs> talking segments! Woohoo! Aren't those always fun? Another talking segment. Seth Rollins bringing up MLK and his quotes. Dean Ambrose even brought up a quote later on. What the fuck was Dean doing there tonight? Nothing. Drew McIntyre, he talked. Then we had a match. That seemed to really be the formula tonight. Mmm. God. Anyways, I don't know. I, I probably sound stupid. Like, God, was he so mad about it? I'm mad because it's just continuous, continuous talk. But this is it. This is Seth Rollins and his promo... Uh, it was a good promo. I, I'll, there were some spots in this promo that I was I really did connect with Seth. I was like, you know what? Good stuff. And then uh, <laughs> Drew McIntyre came in and verbally slaughtered him. So this is Seth Rollins before the match with Drew McIntyre. Um, go ahead and we'll, we'll take a listen. One thing that I saw today, one quote that I saw really stuck with me. Dr. King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands during times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands during times of challenge and controversy. It's a really good quote, actually. I'll agree. And that hit me a lot because my life's kind of been nothing but challenge and controversy as of late. A few months back, I was standing in this ring. I had two titles in my hands. I had two brothers by my side. And now I've got no titles and a broken family. Aw, poor Seth. Getting all emotional. But in life, we can't focus on the things we don't have. We've got to focus on the things that we do have. And what I do have is the same thing I've always had. My first love, my last love this why can't he just say wrestling why can't he say pro wrestling why does he got a point at the crowd what, 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 can't he and just as say long wrestling? as i've got this ring under my feet and this microphone in my hand and this fire in my eyes i can stand here and tell you i'm gonna go to phoenix this sunday and i'm gonna win the royal rumble match and oh shoot but in life, we can't f ah. stand here and tell you I'm going to go to. F I hit the wrong button. Um, no, what I was going to say, they really cut out a really good part where Seth's talking about being, you know, a kid from a small town in Ohio, you know, growing up in the Midwest. You know, he could have been a farmer. He could have been a factory worker. He could have been a truck driver, but he chose wrestling. That's what he's doing because he had heart. I liked that. I think that was a good touch. Some people may think it's kind of cheesy and stupid. Oh, let's build sympathy for Seth before the Rumble. No, I, I think that's good. It's, you know, I'm a I'm a simple guy from the Midwest. This is where I'm from. I, I'm in like the same type of area he is. I get it. So I did it. I liked it. And he talked about, you know, it being a long shot for him, being that small kid, being able to come and you know do this. You know, he said it, it is a long shot. And that's when he went in with the whole thing about the, the passion and everything. So, I don't know. WWE, why'd you leave out the good parts, assholes?
Phoenix this Sunday, and I'm gonna win the Royal Rumble match. And in came Drew. And you know, even saying that sounds crazy. It sounds like a long shot. Hell, it is a long shot, but I gotta be honest with you guys. I don't give a damn because my whole life has been a long shot. I'm not, look, I'm, I'm not your stereotypical WWE oh, superstar. here it is. This wasn't meant for me. I'm not as big as Drew McIntyre. I'm not as powerful as Bobby Lashley. That's not me. I'm just a kid from a small Midwestern town. Oh, not I much see, I different than later. Oklahoma oh, my City. My bad, WWE. My folks, they were working class. They did everything they could to put food on the table, keep a roof over my head. I, hey, I could be working in a factory. I could be working on a farm. I could be doing all that stuff. Could be driving a truck, man. And the only reason I'm not doing that is Yeah, this, this. is the part that I really did like. I, I liked this part with Seth. This. Right here. Call it heart, call it passion, call it love, call it determination, call it whatever you want to call it, but it is not inside my chest. It is ingrained in my soul, in every fiber of my being. And so, yeah, it's a long shot. 30 guys are going to walk into the Royal Rumble on Sunday. They're going to lay it all on the line to go headline at the grandest stage of them all. They are. But when the dust settles, I promise you, there will be one man left standing. There will be one man going to headline WrestleMania. And that man is the man, Seth freaking Rollins. Very impassioned speech. You know, I'm an honest man. And I will not stand idly by while you lie to yourself and lie to these people. There is a 0% chance that you're going to win the Royal Rumble match. I'm going to tell you why. It's your style. You're he flying around, you come off the top off, rope, but, yeah. you've got no regard for your body, and inevitably you will be eliminated. But what would happen if you took all that heart you have, all that passion and you harnessed it, and you put it in the body of a six foot five, 265 pound Terminator, you would get Drew freaking McIntyre. <laughs> I love this guy. So I really hope and I pray that we're in the ring together at the very end of the Royal Rumble. Because I want to look you in your eyes right before I throw you over the top rope. And you have to listen to the ring announcer say, the winner of the 2019 Royal Rumble and the man that's going to go to WrestleMania and win the Universal Championship, Drew McIntyre. And that was that. Was that. Yeah. Um, Drew McIntyre, man, he is so, so good. Uh, Mike work, he's way better than he was back in the day. Um, him and Seth both showed a lot of passion. And, um, man, are they making it hard to decide. Hi, baby. <laughs> My girlfriend's up hearing me being loud. Whoopsie. Uh, <laughs> um... But, you know, it's it's hard to pick. I don't see this being but maybe a two-man race, especially if John Cena is not in this Royal Rumble, which is something that they're talking about uh, being a possibility because I guess he hurt his ankle last week. They only brought it up briefly. He's not been ruled out yet, uh, but apparently he re-aggravated it today. So, I don't know. Maybe he'll still show up. I don't know. They didn't say that. Maybe they just that was an excuse not to have him on the show tonight because... You know, he had to do John Cena things. I don't know. But yeah, good good promo. I liked it. These guys were excellent in this role for tonight. The match, uh, it was a above-average television match. I know these guys could do better. I've seen them do better. But this is, again, something that I know I've seen. Um, 
them do before. It would be nice to get more fresh matchups, but I'm not going to completely complain about a Drew McIntyre, uh, Seth Rollins match. Not like I guess I would a match we saw later on in the show that uh, just blew balls. But it was a good match. You know, McIntyre, he worked on Seth Rollins' ribs throughout the match. Uh, the work that these two guys did in the ring were really good. But Seth Rollins winning with a schoolboy, so you really kind of make you keep Drew looking strong that Seth had to sneak that win in. Match was fantastic. I'm not going to take a lot of time on it. I'm already almost an hour in, and I'm still in the just finishing the first hour of this show. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Uh, but yeah, Seth Rollins wins. It's, it's, I guess it's, you know, it's a pick, flip a coin, who's going to win the Rumble? Gosh, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, what do we get? Revival backstage asking for a third rematch with Vince McMahon and Vince is blah, blah, blah. Kurt Hawkins comes in. Vince is like, look, I'm not, I'm not giving you a match. Go find a new line of employment. And they're like, come on, give us a special referee. And he's like, you, he's like, you know, yeah, you, you, you're the special referee, Kurt Hawkins. And Kurt's like, oh, I guess I've seen enough three counts. Well, you know. So we have a Raw Tag Team Championship match tonight for Monday Night Raw. Dean Ambrose promo uh, talking about injustice. Another thing that um, Martin Luther King brought up that, it, you know, wherever there's a little injustice is, I guess, detrimental to justice everywhere. Something like that. Uh, but he says, you know, it's injustice that he's not the incredible champion. So he's going to go for Seth Rollins. He's going to go for Bobby Lashley in the Rumble. He's going to basically kick them in the family jewels and eliminate them. Jinder Mahal and the Singh Brothers versus the Lucha House Party. Eh, some okay high spots, but the match sucked. I don't care. Get to the Cruiserweight title match with uh, Kalisto. I'd rather see that. Why am I not talking about Dean Ambrose? Because I don't care. Dean Ambrose, that was it. What, what is the talk about? What is Dean doing? What has Dean done? Since he turned heel, he's gave us no reason, and he's continued to look like an idiot. They guess what they've done. Thank you, WWE, for taking something that was supposed to be awesome and uh, making it garbage. So, yeah, I appreciate that, really, wholeheartedly. EC3 promo, the same thing we've seen previously. And then we see EC3 talking, talking to Dana Brooke backstage. Well, she was talking, and he was just... Like, no words came out of his mouth. Literally, no words came out of the man's mouth. And you see Elias walk by and look like, God, what an idiot. Elias is performing. <laughs> he goes to play his song. He stop, you know, He's playing a little bit of things. He says he wrote a new song. Baron Corbin stops him. Says how last week it was him who ratted him out and almost cost him his life. Crowd heckled him. And he's like, are you really laughing? What's funny about that? Um, so he's not going to let him play a song. He's like, look, you're not the GM no more, Baron, so I'm going to play the song. You can't tell me what to do. No, you're not. He's like, look, you, guy in the back, cut his, cut his mic. So he started the song. They ended up, you know, fighting. Um, I do like a couple parts in the song where he says, you know, we don't need another Baron Corbin Elias match. And he also brought up, why are you still wearing the vest? You were fired. Uh, questions that we actually have talked about. Uh, so... Not me particularly, but, you know, everyone else. So, yeah, we did. We got Elias versus Baron Corbin again. Now, unlike Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre, where I know it's going to be a good match, I know the work that these two can do together, I'm just not interested. I think I saw a tweet where someone said there was more Baron Corbin-Elias matches than there have been WrestleManias. <laughs> That's funny. Speaking of Twitter, I'm gonna to uh, I'm gonna check on the um, let's see where is my thing. Final results. What do we got? And it finished. Yep. Basically, people said it was a good show. I don't know. I think you all are crazy. Personally, I I don't know how you all think that that was a good show, but. I guess everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's what I say. Everyone's got their opinion. I'm not going to bash people who want to believe something over something else. But I think it was a trash show. So there you go. That's my opinion. <sighs> but yeah, this match again. Let me get a drink. We're in the home stretch of this show, right? My gosh, this last part of the show was just awful. Um... 
Elias was he was aggressive in the match, but the match ends with the end of days. Book it 50 ficky 50 ficky 50 ficky. Is that what it's called? 50 50 50? I'm a 50 ficky. 50 ficky 50 ficky. I don't know. I'm stupid. Uh, end of days. I, I'm so sick of 50 50 booking. How can how can Elias be taken seriously when he he can't not, just God it's stupid stupid it's all so stupid this is dumb I am over it and watch we'll get some form of these guys again next week watch that's what will happen right we're gonna get these guys yet again next week some form or fashion oh wait the moment we've all been waiting for cole the moment we've all been waiting for cole it's a moment of bliss <laughs> i hate this why do we have i mean sure she's been injured why does she have to be on tv my god you know what the whole point of this whole segment was it was to get the women out there to say that they're supposed to win the Royal Rumble just to argue and fight, right? To have this big old brawl that goes backstage. You know, Alicia Fox out there with that stupid captain's hat that she's still wearing from being the captain of the Rumble in 2017. <sighs> and then Ember Moon sounding cringe as fuck saying, I'm tired of... Not being invited when I know I'm not going to be, so I'm out here to say that I'm going to win the Royal Rumble. That's good for you, sugar. No, you're not. But, hey, I'll give you a participation trophy, okay? And look, I love Ember Moon, but that's not going to happen. And then Mickey James talked, and fucking the Riot Squad came out, and it just got so out of hand, and, and, and Nikki Cross was out there looking crazy as hell. Congratulations, by the way, to Nikki Cross. Not that she'll ever see this. Congratulations to her and Big Dump, uh, Big uh, Demo, um, Killian Dane, guys, uh, for their marriage. So congratulations to them. You know, golf clap. I'm happy for them. Um, just for you, me to do, you know, sleeping. That's what this whole thing was. Just for Alexa Bliss to say, this will be a moment of bliss to remember because I'm in the Royal Rumble. And the crowd popped like, oh my god, we love Alexa Bliss, oh my gosh, I'm over it. And I was a huge Alexa Bliss fan. Not for her talents, though. Not for her talents one bit. Uh, then Lacey Evans came out to zero response. To zero response, guys. Lacey Evans comes out, talked real slow, trash-talked Alexa Bliss, and then claimed that she's going to win the Royal Rumble. You know, because she's classy. And again, she had no response. Not a soul gave a damn that she was out there. You'd think, what, five weeks of promo packages of Lacey Evans, that someone would know who she was? <clears throat> Nothing. So that, my God, I hate this mic stand. So that's what led us to the end of that segment. A segment that was garbage and had no point. Alexa Bliss is returning to in reaction. Hey, don't hit her too hard, guys. She might have to go out for another two months, you know, because she can't wrestle for more than a few weeks at a time. Okay? Be careful. She's fragile. I'm an asshole. Heavy Machinery versus The Ascension. It was a squash match. It ended with a trash compactor for a three count. Um, someone, uh, again, on Twitter stated that um, I think it was uh, Juicy. Um, I don't know. I, th I know that uh, Labar said something about it. I mean, someone said something that he wouldn't be surprised if Otis's name was shortened to just Otis. It'll probably be just Tucker and Otis, right? Tucker and Otis instead of Otis Dovovich and Tucker Knight. Probably what will happen. They'll just shorten his name because, you know, it's too hard to say. You can't say Andrade Cien Almas. That's too much to say every match. 
Andrade Ciamalmas. Just call him Andrade, but his name's Andrade Ciamalmas. He's Otis Dovovich. Let's not change it to Otis. Please, guys, don't change it. God. Raw Tag Team Championship time. Um, real quick. They actually said something about you know, Heavy Machinery watching this match to see who becomes champions. Does that mean they're staying on Raw? I thought they were just bouncing between shows because we didn't know yet, right? You know, I guess we'll see if they're on SmackDown or not. Heavy Machinery. I like them, team, but they're already becoming a comedy act. Um, Rune Gable, The Revival. Kurt Hawkins is the referee. First off, Kurt Hawkins. Fantastic job as the referee. Making the hold the tag ropes. Really watching the feet. Making sure that no one's doing... The Revival got that clean match. Fair and square referee. Ultimately, still kept... Ended up costing the Revival the match. We are in what? This is what? Five, six, seven times they've been screwed or whatever. I, like, I've lost track. You know, the screw the Revival train continues. They're not going to be tag team champions. And, and you know, there was the rumors that they were... Um, asked for their release that ultimately turned out to not be uh well i guess they did but the fact is that their contracts don't end till april of next year so hey boys strap in for a fun year of losing and facing lucha house party again that's what you want well after the match after the roll up with rude and gable uh, of course kurt hawkins kicking the foot off the ropes when the revival trying to help each other Revival ended up attacking Kurt Hawkins. And in the moment we've all been waiting for, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder reunited and it feels so good. Hey, I'm down for it if it gives them both something to do. And I'll guarantee you, mark my words, these guys will be going for a tag team championship by WrestleMania. They'll be going for a tag team championship and Zack Ryder's streak will be... Uh, or not Zack Ryder, but Kurt Hawkins' streak will be over. But then I can't have the cool merch anymore. You know what I'm saying? I gotta have that cool merch. <sighs> so Ronda Rousey, backstage, cuts a promo. I know, I I'm not really giving a lot of thoughts to a lot of the things, but let's be honest. Does it matter? Revival screwed. No matter what. And I just see the punishment. I see them losing to Ryder and Hawkins. I see them losing to Ryder and Hawkins on Raw next week. Okay? This this is just going to get worse for the Revival. We know this. There's no need for me to dive into it. We know this. As far as Hawkins and Ryder goes, um, yeah, they, they, they'll be a team. They'll go for a title. They'll be like the, 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 the um, they'll be the Heath Slater and Rhino for Raw this year. Uh, eventually they'll win a tag team title because I just, you know, why not? It gives them something to do. It's just to keep, you know, Zack Ryder from wanting to leave and go to AEW. That's basically what it is. Call me stupid. I don't give a damn. So yeah, promo with Ronda Rousey. I don't know why I wrote good promo when I listened back to it and rethought about it. No, that was a bad promo. She stumbled a lot. Like she's, you know, uh, stumbling worse than I do. Trying to, you know, collect her thoughts about Sasha. However, she did have some really deep cuts on Sasha in this match. Talking about how she's going around the world being a boss, not being a champion. She's always talking about being a champion. Honey, it's the, you're, you're a fake champion, okay? You were told you were going to win the belt. You didn't really do anything to deserve this championship. As much as I'm all for you, Rhonda, and really happy that you're doing really good, you, you were handed it. So then we have the match. Sasha, oh, she cut her deep. Everything was handed to her. Resentment, she came in here, had everything handed to her while she's been busting her ass. I mean, oh my God. If they had it on there, I'd play it. It was so good. It was Sasha Banks, pure boss sausage, Sasha Banks. And she just every chance she had she was getting under her skin she made ronda look like an idiot it was amazing it was so great and yes everyone ronda lost this match they're gonna talk about how ronda's never been pinned never submitted now that's why natty was there natty was there to take the shot for her friend but she lost plain and simple ronda's not undefeated 
they better not say she's undefeated. Undefeated in singles action. That's probably what they'll say. So it still sounds good, right? Undefeated, never been pinned in one-on-one -on -one match. Cool beans. Um, yeah, to start the match, though, Sasha, she had a cheap shot on Ronda. Uh, and that just started it. And that just it, that was the theme of this match was these two just mainly Sasha just at Ronda again and again and again, just not letting up. And I really enjoyed I really liked it. I really, really did. Um, some good exchanges when they were in the ring with each other. Uh, damn, look, Ronda's got to be a little safer in the ring. She's tossing those girls over for those judo throws. Like, I thought she ripped Bailey's arm out. Um, Bailey was just cannon fodder in this match. Bailey was just there to just take a few beatings. Uh, but yeah. Uh, she ends up hitting the bank statement on Natalia. Natty tapped. You know, it was a good match. Um, it closed the show. It was your main event. Um, but it really was nothing like game changing. You know, I can pr I can see even because when the match was over, those two were still in each other's faces, having to be break up, broken up by Bailey and Natalia. Man, these girls are going to tear that house up. I is I guess I just gave Ronda some shit, but I know she can go in the ring. Does she need to work on her shit? Yes, I don't think she's great yet. She could be there for sure, but Sasha's going to bring a great match out of her. And I don't want Ronda or I don't want Bailey or Natalia ringside for this. Leave them in the back. We don't need them ringside. They're in the rumble. Leave them at that. Let these two come out there, do their thing, and let's just leave it at that. Okay? Sounds great. Awesome. I like that. Thank you. That's what we need to do. Okay? <laughs> but that is – that's it, guys. That's pretty much it. Like, I can't wait to see this. Sasha's not going to lose – or Sasha's not going to win. Uh, but, hey, maybe this is setting up for the Horsemen versus Horsemen match. Just say it, horse women versus horse women. I said horse men. My bad. Um, so yeah, that is your Monday Night Raw review, guys. Uh, I've been going for about an hour and ten minutes. I'm done. My throat hurts, and I gotta upload this. So when you guys see this, I've already been doing this. It's like 11:20, so hopefully by midnight this is up. Thank you guys so very much. I want to thank everyone who came in.